Good day. Here we are with percussion multitasking part one. So we're going to be talking about um, one-handed playing technique for a variety of percussion instruments including clavés, triangle, tambourine, and suspended cymbal primarily. Oftentimes uh, percussionists, um, amateur through professional and everywhere in between, are put in situations where they're short-staffed and they have to be able to do multiple things concurrently or they have to at least be able to do one thing while preparing to do another thing. They have to transition too quickly to be able to legitimately pick up an instrument and get ready for legitimate two-handed technique and then put the instrument back down. Sometimes there just isn't enough time for that. So, we're going to be talking about how to conquer some of that. So first of all with the claves, clave technique, traditionally, these are, uh, by the way, these are rhythm tech synthetic claves. They're mostly made out of fiberglass and a few other materials. I think they're about $18 Canadian last time I checked and they work really well for this. They're also pretty much indestructible so we're going to use these for this video. So first of all, legitimate clave technique is done usually by, in your non-dominant hand, making a pretend snare drum grip upside down, setting the clave on it and then striking the clave um, that you're holding with the other one in your hand right in the center. The nice thing about these claves being that they're synthetic, they're quite loud. So if they end up being dampened a little bit, that's not the end of the world. They're still going to sound pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a hand towel here. I've got a black hand towel. I've already got a cloth on my trap table. Trap tables are great for percussionists to be able to set mallets down, set accessory instruments down, pick them back up again. So I'm just going to fold this over a couple of times like this. And I'm going to set the clave on top. Now you may be asking, why is it that I'm putting another towel on top of a towel? The reason why is because you of course want to mitigate mechanical, uh, mechanical noise from the music stand. So obviously the composer wrote for claves, not claves plus the sound of a Manhasset music stand rattling like a space shuttle. So you don't want that sound where you're getting uh, extra sound out of the stand. So we're going to place this here. And we're just going to set one clave on top. play it and it still sounds quite good. It sounds almost as good as it does when I hold it with my hand, just a little bit quieter. But in a less than ideal circumstance where you have to do it one-handed, that's going to work for you. So there's claves. Next example of one-handed technique is triangle. And uh, this is a pretty simple and self-explanatory one. Obviously the triangle is on a clip for a reason so that we can clip it onto the stand when we're not playing it. And ideally you would pick the triangle up, select a striker, and then just play on the bottom on a 45 degree angle, slightly to the right of center, which I went over in another instructional video that I did. Now, clipping it onto the stand and playing it while it's clipped onto the stand causes the same problem that I just went over with claves uh, regarding um, extraneous mechanical rattling sound from the music stand. And that's obviously going to be a problem. That's why you only do this under less than ideal circumstances. You simply clip the triangle onto the stand, adjust the height of the music stand and the angle of the music stand so that the triangle isn't being dampened by the clip. You can see that if I turn it like this, now the triangle is actually in contact with the clip. Whereas if I turn it up, now the clip is uh, parallel to the ground and perpendicular to the triangle. And the triangle is hanging freely and it's not against the clip. And when I play the triangle, you will get some sound from the music stand. Now percussionists have um, tried to invent all kinds of really fancy clips that that try to remove the triangle from the clip as many times as possible with respect to resonance. And people have also experimented with all kinds of interesting uh, techniques where they stuff fabric or stuff socks into the triangle clip and then jam it onto the music stand. You're still going to get rattling sound from the stand. So unfortunately, that is still going to be an issue and that's why you only do it when you absolutely have to. But you can still do pretty much everything that you would normally do. You can play, you can use two uh, one-handed technique and you can do rolls if you need to, but you can hear probably a little bit of that extra music stand rattling sound. So that covers triangle. Moving on, now we're going to talk about tambourine. So I'm going to bring my tambourine forward. If you have a tambourine case, that's great. I'm using the tambourine case on top of a cloth that's on my music stand. If you don't have a tambourine case, that's fine. You can just use another towel like I was using over there. Um, so generally when you play the tambourine, you're trying to... And this is another thing that I went over in a tambourine specific video that I did. But generally, you're trying to mitigate the sound of the head ringing, which is why you um, uh, put your thumb on it to dampen it and sometimes put the ball of your wrist on it to play. And you're always holding it 
where uh, there aren't any zills in the way of your hand. And the other advantage of holding it that way is that you're going to be playing it the furthest away from your hand and therefore you're always going to be affecting this many zills on this side and the same number of zills on that side so your technique is somewhat symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the tambourine upside down and I'm going to place it on my tambourine case and, and you can see that the stand is not flat, the stand is angled. For the same reason that I went over in the tambourine instructional video when I said you should play it on a 45 degree angle, if you play it flat, the zills keep teeter-tottering afterwards and making sound. So, um, if you play it on a 45, the instrument makes it sound and then uh, is silent between all the notes that you're trying to play, which gives you clarity. So that's why we're angling the stand. And once again, this part of the tambourine that doesn't have any zills on it is um, closest to me. And then I just reach forward and play like this. So, we've covered three instruments so far, triangle, claves, and tambourine. So, a case in point, let's say that a percussionist has a part, um, just for example, with quarter notes on the tambourine and a 3-2 uh, son clave part on claves. So, the part's obviously written for two people under ideal circumstances, but we don't have two people, we just have little old me, so the clave part would be that, repeated over and over again, and then just quarter notes on the tambourine. So now, I'm able to do both at the same time. As another case in point, let's say that you have a part that's written for three people under ideal circumstances, where you have two quarter notes on the tambourine in the first half of the bar, two quarter notes on the triangle in the second half of the bar, and you have that clave pattern. So now, I'm going to put a triangle beater in my right hand and I'm going to essentially just play the tambourine with my fingers while holding the triangle beater away from the instrument and then I'm going to go and strike the triangle for my uh, second two quarter notes. So my right hand is going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Prepare to play the claves. So there's an example of, um, just a case in point, random example of something that was written for three people under ideal circumstances and is now being done by one. Now, of course, you can see that I've been moving things around. I've been changing the angle of the stand, changing the height of the stand. I'm always trying to have everything that I need to be as close together as I possibly can. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily occur to students who have a little bit less experience doing this kind of thing. Um, and they'll actually have things super far away from one another or they'll be playing over here and trying to look at their music and watch the conductor. So encourage, uh, I strongly encourage players to keep everything logistically as simple as possible. And of course, if the, let's say the conductor is out there, I've got my sheet music here and pretty much between peripheral vision, I'm watching the conductor and the sheet music at the same time or primarily the sheet music and then the conductor at the same time. And I can still see what I'm doing with my peripheral vision and, um, and I'm able to just look down and double check once in a while as I was doing when I demonstrated that case in point. So, moving on, last one we're going to do today is suspended cymbal, one-handed suspended cymbal technique. So I'm just going to get this stuff out of the way and bring my suspended cymbal into front and center view. So here I've got a suspended cymbal. Ideally, um, if you are experienced with four mallet playing, then that's great. You can grab your mallets and you can actually use Steven's technique and just spread out your interval and do the suspended cymbal roll one-handed. But um, that's not necessarily the case, and if you don't know that technique, that's totally fine. So another technique I'm going to show you, if you want to get in close here. You can see that I've actually put some hockey tape on the bottom part of these mallets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, essentially, if I'm doing this with my right hand, since, um, since I'm right-handed, then I'm going to take the top mallet and I'm going to cross it to the left of the bottom mallet. And then I'm just going to sort of grab a hold as though I'm holding a snare drum stick. And I've got my thumb spaced in between. And uh, that's great, thanks, you can back out now. So I've got my thumb spaced in between in order to make sure that the mallets uh, have a good amount of space in between them, just like a couple of inches in between them. 
And what you'll notice is that if you freak out and go, oh my god, this is so difficult, and then you try to play the cymbal, you'll actually be dampening the cymbal as you're playing it. So it's best to just be really, really loose, like like my technique's totally going to fall apart, basically. And that will allow the mallet heads to ricochet off of the cymbal. You want to do this roll as far to the outside of the cymbal as you can. So that you get a good sustained sound. Uh, you can also dampen the cymbal slightly with the mallets. Uh, in any case, that's one tip, play as far to the outside as possible. And another tip, make sure that when you're holding the mallets, that uh, they're right above and beneath one another. Obviously, if you hold them like this, that's going to be a problem because now either one of them isn't hitting or one of the mallet shafts is hitting um, the cymbal from the top and then the other one, it, it's the mallet hitting from the bottom. It doesn't really sound like a roll anymore. So you want to actually have them, I mean, you can choke up as far or as far back as you want on the mallets, but you want to have them right above and beneath one another so that you can do something like this, for example. I've got my wind chimes here and I've got my suspended cymbal here, and now I'm going to do a roll. And so playing the wind chimes, and then I can either use my hand or the head of the mouse to dampen the cymbal, and I can use my forearm to dampen the wind chimes. So that's a case in point for um, uh, having to play the suspended cymbal one-handed while you also do something else with your other hand. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.